Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? Uh, so in this video, I kind of want to do a bit of a follow-up on the uh, HDRI video that I did a few nights ago. Uh, in that video, I used uh, Blender to basically unwrap the sphere and then bring that into Lumion. Uh, but I did play around with SketchUp a bit, and I was able to uh, figure out how to do it. Um, not only that, I was actually... Uh, some of you may not know this, but I kind of found out how you can bring in uh, any size texture you want into SketchUp. It's pretty easy. You can just flip a button. Uh, but by doing that, you can actually make a uh, an HDRI in SketchUp. And while it's not perfect, it does kind of work as uh, just like a sunlight or a, sorry, a, a sun sphere that you can just kind of uh, drop maybe a house in uh, if you don't want to do anything like setting up your background and you want to just throw that in. Um, I will be putting a couple of those up on the 3D warehouse. So if you don't use Lumion and you just use SketchUp, you can grab one of those. But uh, yeah, if... Um, if you don't already have Sketch UV, that is going to be necessary for this tutorial. So a link is below the video, but um, you can also see it here. But yeah, just copy it below the video. And then we're also going to be getting our pictures from HDI or HDRI Haven. Uh, everything uh, on HDRI Haven is fair use. Um, all Any HDRI you like, you can bring it right into SketchUp, Lumion. You can use it commercially. Uh, it's a fantastic site, so we'll uh, get into that. Uh, the first thing we have to do is in the open SketchUp file, we're going to make a circle. And it doesn't have to be any particular size. Um, how big I make this one? Uh, maybe I will make it a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll just, I just made it like 48 feet. It, like I said, this one doesn't, doesn't really affect it because we're going to be scaling it up later. Uh, but when you make the circle, you do need to go up here to where it says segments. And you're going to want to make that I'd say like a hundred just because you want it to be really smooth. And as you see, when we do that, um, the edges um, just get a lot nicer because it's making more geometry there. So once you get here, uh, highlight everything and then go into the move tool and hit control C and you want to drag it over. So we're making a duplicate of this, then hit scale. And we're just going to drag this down to like 0.98. Um, I find that when you try and make a sphere and you don't scale this one down a little bit, it doesn't make a perfect sphere for some reason. It always seems to lose some geometry on, um, I guess, like the north pole of the sphere. Uh, and you just get a bunch of these holes. You don't want that. So I scale it down a little bit, and then it, it just makes a perfect sphere. So what we're going to do now is I draw a line on it to the center, just so you see it clipped to that blue dot. This is just so that we can line it up perfectly with the other one. So once we do that for both of them, we will take this and we will rotate it now. And we'll drop it here. And then we're gonna delete those lines. We just use those as kind of guides. So we're gonna click the outside ring here. We're gonna go up to tools, follow me, and you're going to hover over this face and then just click it. It might take a second, but you will get this. Um, now, in this scenario, uh, you this actually worked out really well because you want the gray face, which is like the back face, to be facing outwards because we're going to be applying um, a glass material to that so that it's see-through. Um, and, yeah, so we get rid of that, and then we have a perfect sphere. Uh, I would also recommend that you grab it and then just go kind of somewhere on the bottom here and just drag that to the origin. That's just going to make it so that when we do bring it into Lumion, go into x-ray mode quickly here just to get that. Uh, it's just so that when we go into Lumion, uh, if you have to scale it up or down, it's just it's going to work with you a little bit easier. So now that we have done that, let's go um, to HDRI Haven. And just kind of a quick note, uh, the link to Sketch UV should just take you right here. Um, since it's on the extension warehouse, I was already signed into my uh, SketchUp account or my Google account, so it just let me download it right away. Um, you should be able to just click this button, um, and then you go into the uh, you know install or install the uh, extension in the uh, extension manager. Um, just for anyone that doesn't know, it's this button here, and then you go to install. Um, just thought I'd mention that quickly, but uh, yeah, so you go to HDRI Haven. Now they have a ton of really cool scenes. Um, for this one, maybe we'll pick something that we haven't done before. Let's do, uh, maybe we'll do like this one. Again, it doesn't matter. Once you once you kind of set this up once in SketchUp, you can save the file. And then 
um, you can just keep changing the material inside of Lumion. So you're not going to have to do this with every single HDRI. You're only going to have to do it with the first. And then if you download like all 200 or roughly 200 HDRIs from this website, then you can just basically keep the texture and keep uh, moving there. So yeah, once we're here, uh, we don't want to download these ones. So those are the actual HDR files. Um, they have lighting built into them along with the uh, HDRI kind of panorama. So that isn't compatible with Lumion at the moment. Uh, hopefully it's something that they add down the road, but uh, we want the 8K tone mapped JPEG. So we're gonna download that. Uh, and then we will hop back into SketchUp while that's downloading. Uh, now, so for everyone that doesn't know how uh, you can you can put two materials uh, on one face, the front and the back. Um, and in this situation, we are going to apply the translucent glass gray to the outside. Uh, and this is going to make it see through. But uh, when we when we unwrap it, it's going to go to the front face, which is now the inside face. It might be a little confusing, but basically you want the uh, typically like with the default material, there's a white and a gray face. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, you want the gray face to be facing outside because that's the face that we are going to be making uh, invisible so that all the light can pass through it in Lumion. And so while we can't bring in the lighting of an HDR or HDRI, then uh, we're going to be able to still be able to use the the real skies because if we weren't able to do that then you would just encapsulate your your scene and everything would be dark so if you're at this point let's go to camera standard view for this one i guess i'll, I'll do left um it's just the way that sketch uv uh, unwraps it i kind of like going to the side but from, you just want to set it to one angle so that you're facing it right on um it because it, it does unwrap it based on your camera angle uh, so we're going to go into the sketch UV mapping tools here. Uh, once you click it, you won't see anything happen, but now you'll, uh, you'll kind of be in the mode. I, I wish there was something that kind of indicated it more. Uh, but if you right click here, you're going to go to the spherical map. And if we click that, uh, yeah, you should see like it's, it's going to look backwards because we're looking through it to the other side. And I know this may seem a little bit weird, but as you see, as I spin, you can only ever see uh, 180 degrees. And that's because the side that we're looking, like the closest side to us is see-through. Like you're not gonna see any of that. So you can only see the front face. Uh, and this is what we want. Like that's that's the effect that uh, we need. So once you get here, uh, I'll show you how to set this up quickly in SketchUp and then we'll bring it into uh, into Lumion just to, to finish up the tutorial. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to uh, the make a new material. We're gonna use the uh, image texture. We're going to go to downloads. So uh, you can save this wherever you want. Like I said, I, I just put this in my downloads folder, but we're going to go to the lost city. This one's called. And um, I turn for some reason, uh, it always tries to overwrite the material you have. So in this case, I just had the translucent glass gray. Just make sure that the opacity is uh, 100 on this. So we're going to hit OK. And then we will click on this here. So we want to, I want to replace that material with the one we just made. So we hit okay. And yeah, now I don't know why this happens. It always goes and like cuts it in half. But if we go back up to the sketch UV mapping tools and then we right click it again and we, now we do a spherical map. Uh, it'll work. You might be able to just kind of bypass doing it the first one and apply the material to the inside. But I figured that it's kind of good that we get, like I kind of show you guys how it looks when you apply the material because it, it is pr pretty easy for this to kind of mess up. Like it can be uh, finicky, especially if you don't uh, totally understand what UV unwrapping is. Uh, UV unwrapping is just how the the software is told your image to be displayed on a surface. Um, computers have kind of a hard time putting textures onto things like spheres, even cubes. Uh, so we have to give it almost a map that can be flattened down onto a, a 2D, uh, 2D dimensions so that the computer can uh, line up the coordinates on exactly where it should be. Uh, so yeah, this now has a HDR um, image on it. Um, now, some of you, if you do this, you're gonna notice that your image quality is uh, not very good at all. And I'm gonna show you a quick fix to that. Um, I actually found this out just making this tutorial, but SketchUp has a max resolution of 1K by 1K. Um, 
unless you go in and flip a certain uh, menu on. So I believe it is in. Just had it open, trying to <laughs> in it's in preferences. Ah, here it is. So it's in window preferences. Uh, then you go to the open GL. And uh, for some people, uh, this use maximum texture size, it's not going to be checked on. Um, it does give you a warning saying like if you, if you don't have a high-end graphics card we don't recommend doing this I, I think for this it's fine um i mean i don't think most people are bringing 4k textures and like 8k textures into sketchup very often um for me personally when i'm using sketchup i just use the default materials and then change them in something like lumion or blender um the, the ones in sketchup are just kind of placeholders just to change the material ids so yeah that um that should be good for that. But now we're just going to take it into Lumion and we'll uh, we'll play around with it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to load in uh, one of my my other scenes I was just using for the testing. Um, it, as I said before, you're only going to have to do this once. As long as you save it, um, as long as you save the file somewhere you can just access it or even just save it inside of your Lumion's import library, then you have the sphere and anytime you need to change the scene up, you can use it. Um, I will mention too that I think the HDRI looks a lot better in Lumion. Um, SketchUp, I don't know if it's just the camera angle, but something doesn't look right with it. Like even if you made it really big and you kind of dropped a, uh, you know, like a model on it, I, I don't think that it would totally look right. Um, but if you kind of want a, a way to make easy skies, um, that kind of thing in SketchUp, I do think that it's a pretty, a pretty solid option. And as I mentioned, um, I'm going to be putting some of the um, some of the HDRIs from HDRI Haven uh, onto a sphere, and then I'm going to upload that, maybe like five of them, onto the uh, warehouse. So I'll uh, I'll leave some links to that in the description as well. Um, but that's just going to, uh, you know, I guess if people uh, don't use Lumion, maybe they don't even uh, they don't typically do that stuff. It'll just give them some uh, sky spheres, um, just something kind of quick and dirty, and something that people can play around with. This may uh, <laughs> this file may just take a second to load. Um, I'm not really sure why, because I don't know what would be in the file that makes it take so long, but ah, there we go. Okay, so once we're in here, we have our scene. Uh, we will go to import, and did I save this? Uh, let me just make sure it's saved on my desktop. Okay, it is saved on the desktop. Perfect. Um, yeah, so we'll go into Lumion, and here it is. I think this is it. As long as it's unwrapped the right way, it doesn't really matter if the picture is on it. Um, as I said, that's, that's the important part. Ah, there we go. Um, as you can see, so you get that glass material on it, that's fine. Um, we're going to be getting rid of that. I don't know why it um, defaults to that. I don't really, I don't like the blue glass, but that's just the way it is. So um, we can adjust it. So we can just kind of look at this, engage it. Like, as you can see, it's kind of, we want the whole model inside of it. And I'm actually going to make this uh, quite a bit bigger, I think. And then I like to drag it so it's kind of going down through the ground a little bit. And... Let me just see if this, uh, yeah, it, this doesn't have to be perfect. As I said, uh, I will be leaving another link to a video I did uh, where I go a little more in-depth on this. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show how this works. So the last thing that we're going to do before this is ready is we will drop on the outside of it. It has to be on the outside. We're going to drop an invisible texture. So we're going to go to new, invisible. And then you should be able to just see right through it. But then when you go inside you are like totally um, inside of it. And uh, the last thing I just want to show you um, is how to change this uh, texture. So uh, you just click, and I just have a hidden texture. That's why it looks weird here. But we're going to click and make sure you're clicking on the uh, panorama. Um, and I saved it. So this is just another panorama um, 
or HDRI that I got from the website. Um, but uh, yeah, whenever you bring one in, just make sure you remove the normal map because I find that kind of messes it up. And then uh, I think it's good practice just to give it a little bit of emissive, uh, emissiveness. Uh, I typically like to go so it says 0.1 and then drag it a little bit back until it says 0 0.0. Um, I find that that's the most realistic kind of, uh, I guess, lighting uh, because it, it doesn't start to have any like blur, but you still get uh, some illumination. So uh, if we go back in and we look out, then uh, bang. Now, obviously, you can move this around just to, to make the scene fit. But what is really nice about this, and I, I mentioned this in the video um, that I did before, is that as you spin around, if you set it up in the right place, uh, no matter what window you're looking out of, you should have a background in all of them. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to leave um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let me know uh, what you thought of the video. Um, this was kind of just one that I should have probably went through in um, the other video. Uh, at the time that I made it, I didn't think that it was possible to do this. Uh, I had to do some investigating with Sketch UV and um, just kind of uh, some functions with SketchUp because I personally had never used the double-sided material before. I had no need for it. But yeah, I know if I helped you out, um, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel uh, and drop me a like. Uh, it really helps me out a lot. And if you have any comments about um, just how I uh, how I explained it in the video, what I could have done better, um, I would really appreciate that uh, criticism. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. And uh, I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Have a good one.